The Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC, the world's largest contract chip maker, will import more than 500 migrant workers from Taiwan to help the company build its new facility in Phoenix, Arizona. According to Nikai Asia, the construction of the plant has fallen behind schedule, quote, due to labor shortages and other factors. And the company has reportedly said construction costs have surpassed expectations. Reporter at the American Prospect, Lee Harris, tweeted in response to this situation a few weeks ago, writing, in the South, semiconductor firms expecting billions in federal tax cuts and grants are refusing to partner with unions to train workers. Instead, arguing that the U.S. lacks a skilled workforce. Can you believe that? Chip giant TSMC is importing migrant labor. At least two construction workers have reportedly died at Arizona's TSMC fabrication facility, the American Prospect writes. Reporter at the American Prospect, Lee Harris, joins us now to discuss further on her reporting. Lee, th this is really fascinating to me. You have a company that's potentially going to retrieve billions of dollars in tax subsidies from the taxpayers. We're paying for this stuff. And yet they're importing workers versus using workers there because, according to them, U.S. workers aren't, quote, skilled enough. Do, do you buy into this? Well, it's a, it's a really interesting problem. Um, it, it's, it's kind of been fascinating. I, I went to Phoenix, and it's been very interesting to watch this extraordinarily successful company come in and hit up against the realities of the American labor market, which I think to, to sort of half speak to TSMC's point, relies heavily on untrained temp workers and staffing agencies whose business model is treating workers as dispensable. So it's true that they've had a number of problems with the staffing strategy that they've chosen for their site in Phoenix, uh, but I think that's partly because they've uh, they've chosen not to go the union path and instead and have refused to re to sign a project labor agreement or, or an agreement with a pre hire agreement with local labor groups. So just to back up a little bit and give you some context, uh, the funding here is coming from the Chips and Science Act passed uh, last August, which contained fifty two billion dollars. Uh, in subsidies for, for U.S. semiconductor foundries. That's still not gone out the door. The Commerce Department is right now in the process of choosing where to spend the money. And they put out a public guidance document incentivizing, encouraging companies to work with local, local labor groups and to outline their workforce plan. So I went to Phoenix for my reporting to figure out what things have actually looked like at this 12,000 worker job site uh, that's employing hundreds of subcontractors. Now, because it's this enormous and complicated job site, it can be hard to confirm specific injuries. But I in interviewed workers uh, who told me about really grueling problems that they've faced uh, at this site. Uh, first of all, uh, according to the president of the Arizona Building Trades Council, at least two construction workers have died on this site. Uh, one who was using a, a grinder and, and um, uh, suffered an, an injury to his femoral artery and another who died of an overdose. Um, workers described loads of steel being dropped from cranes, several injuries from falls, uh, including a man who fell 30 feet through improperly marked flooring. Uh, one person told me he, um, uh, that that man broke ribs and damaged his spleen. So it's, uh, by the accounts I heard, been a really challenging job site to work on. Now to zoom out a little bit and look at the, the recruiting and workforce component and some of TSMC's complaints, um, it's been surprising to find these things since President Biden had visited the site uh, and, and bragged that it was being, quote, built union. <laughs> uh, but that's misleading. While there are a couple uh, union contractors on the site, uh, the, the ma large majority of workers are non-union contractors. So to come back to that work workforce component and TSMC's complaints here, it's interesting that TSMC is simultaneously complaining that American workers are expensive and incompetent and then also strongly opposing unions. Um, I, I want to get in in a second to why uh, it may make less sense to use non-unionized workers, but I'll stop for a second there. That's actually exactly what I was going to ask about. In the United States, it seems that that's our only protection against these really unfair and dangerous labor practices. We don't have a lot of regulations that protect workers outside of workers who decide to form a union and negotiate for those protections. So can you just say more about what the workers are feeling and what your sense is about them deciding intentionally to hire non-union workers and also to bring in 500 plus migrant workers? 
For sure. Like you said, unions are about worker protections. They're also about training a skilled workforce. And in Arizona, so a key part of a chip foundry, which is what TSMC is trying to build here, is called a clean room. It has to be kept extraordinarily clean, even as it's being built in the middle of the desert, because chips can be ruined by one speck of dust, by tiny impurities. So to keep the clean rooms sanitary as they're being built, TSMC brought in ABM Industries, which is a huge staffing company that also staffs Amazon warehouses. And it's it's notorious for illegal labor practices. It's faced dozens of lawsuits over wage theft. As of 2018, they had paid fines and settlements and settlements in 43 lawsuits uh, for illegal labor practices. And since then, they've faced several more. Uh, they had to pay $140 million to settle a class action lawsuit brought by janitors in California who said they were owed wages. So anyway, that's who that's that's who they've brought in to staff this plant. I interviewed uh, ABM workers on the site, including a janitor who told me that she's been consistently underpaid. Her checks are just being made out at the wrong hourly rate, and her colleagues are facing similar pay issues. And when I contacted ABM, they admitted that they've had, quote, technical issues uh, paying team members at this site. So this is the sort of contractor that TSMC is bringing in and then expecting to do competent work while exploiting workers. Just to give one other example, uh, workers told me that non-union contractors have also caused big setbacks, partly due to their lack of training. Um, I was I was given the example of a non-union crew of pipe fitters who they had installed a big piece of 72 inch pipe and ran water through it. And then when they went to drain the pipe, they forgot to add a vent, basically creating a vacuum. So if you're a union pipe fitter, this is a really obvious mistake. You would be taught about this as a first year union apprentice, but clearly the workers hadn't been taught about this. So the pipe collapsed. It was like sucking the air out of a plastic bottle. And uh, and apart from you know being risky, um, uh, it led to significant delays. So, to bring it back to TSMC's strategy, um, they're now complaining that it's really hard to build things in America, that it's impossible to work with American workers. Unions in the area are outraged because they want a project labor agreement, you know, a, a guarantee that the company will hire them so they can move ahead on training up hundreds of workers to staff this site. But instead, TSMC's moved in the opposite direction and said, you know what, uh, we're going to work with the government to get uh, permits to fly in hundreds of our own workers because we simply find American workers to be impossible to work with. And, and, and the most kind of outrageous thing is that uh, this has become a strategy to tell uh, the Department of Commerce, actually, we need more money. We need more money from chips because we can't work with American workers. Um, we're, it, it, uh, as I said, um, it's too costly uh, to build things in this country. And so you'll need to support us um, at even higher levels. I mean, so look, Lee, we're talking about $15 billion in credits. Now, the Department of Commerce, and I saw in your article, they declined to comment on this. No surprise there. But you, you, you point out something I think is really fascinating here. If you go with unionized workers, we know that they're going to have all of the qualifications necessary. But it's going to cost more. They can demand more, such as safe work conditions, which you also mentioned. Now, when you think about the migrant workers, legally, they can't lawfully make the same demand. So do you think this is a matter of U.S. workers not being proficient or the company saying, we just don't want to spend more money, we don't want to deal with having to have safer work requirements, we would rather fly in some folks, let them do the job. If they complain, it's no big deal. We can pay them less money, and then we send them back home. I think it's a classic story in which our broken immigration system um, exploits workers, you know, to the advantage of multinational companies in in Sunbelt states who are who who make it harder for uh, for undocumented workers or for workers who who only have work visas, you know, at the pleasure of the company that employs them, make it harder for them to organize. So so the unions I spoke to in Arizona, their biggest issue with the fact that these workers are being flown in is number one that that um, unions right there in Arizona, workers right there in Arizona aren't being trained up. But also, once these people come in, uh, they're much harder to organize in any kind of pushback against the company because they're only there at at, at special request by TSMC. Thank you for this good reporting, Lee Harris, and for coming on and breaking down this really important issue with us. Thanks so much for having me on. Thanks, Lee.